about this area is that forming the bond as close as possible. Well, now we're taking a pi bond and transforming it into another pi bond. This tail is on this pi bond, and this head is pointing to a bond region, which means we're forming another pi bond. So are we putting the new pi bond as close as is possible to the old pi bond? Well, no. Um, how can we make a new pi bond closer? The closest place to put the, the new pi bond would be over here. This region over here is a lot closer to where the original pi bond was. So this is too big of a jump. We're jumping this pi bond too far away from the original pi bond. So this is a bad arrow because it does not satisfy as close as possible. That arrow is bad. How can we fix it? Well, this arrow is good. Do you see why this arrow is making the new pi bond as close as is possible to the original pi bond? You can see it's as close as possible because the old pi bond um, was being shared by this carbon and the new pi bond would be shared by this carbon. So that's as close as, uh, that's the new pi bond as close as is possible to the original pi bond. Uh, so you can see that when you take a pi bond and form a new pi bond, um, the new pi bond should still be shared by one of the atoms that were sharing the old pi bond. One of the atoms that was sharing the old pi bond should still be sharing the new pi bond. I'll say that again. One of the atoms that was sharing the old pi bond should still be sharing the new pi bond. That way you're sure that the new pi bond is as close as is possible to the old pi bond. For example, in this case, this carbon was sharing the old pi bond, and this carbon will also be sharing the new pi bond. So we know that this new pi bond is going to be as close as possible to the old pi bond. So this would satisfy that rule. I'm trying to decide whether these arrows satisfy the as close as possible rule. This arrow is fine, uh, but this arrow is not fine. So here we're taking a lone pair and making a pi bond. Taking a lone pair and making a pi bond. But this new pi bond is not as close as possible to the original lone pair. How could we put a new pi bond closer to the original lone pair? Well, it would have been closer if we put it over here or over here. That means that this is not um, a good arrow. We don't want to make that big of a jump. Instead, this is where we want to put the new pi bond. You can see that obviously this new pi bond is going to be closer to the original lone pair than if we put the pi bond over here. So this is the right way to draw the arrow, so now I'm going to erase this wrong way to draw the arrow. So now this would be satisfying the as close as possible rule. And actually in this case you probably wouldn't keep this arrow around. But again, I'm not worried about make, doing everything totally realistically here. I just want to make sure that we're only drawing arrows that satisfy the as close as possible rule. In this part of the videos, we're just focusing on drawing arrows that satisfy the as close as possible rule, and we're not worried about other aspects of drawing realistic arrows. Okay, so what does it take um, to move the lone pair so that the new pi bond is as close as is possible to uh, the original lone pair? Well, notice that the pi bond should be um, shared by the atom that originally had the lone pair. The new pi bond that you're forming should be shared by the atom that originally had the lone pair. For example, notice here, this carbon here originally owned this lone pair. And now, once we make this change, this carbon is still going to be sharing that pair in this pi bond. That's the way to get a pi bond that's as close as possible to the original lone pair. The pi bond should be shared by an atom that was originally owning that lone pair. Do these arrows satisfy the as close as possible? This arrow is fine. This arrow is not correct. We're taking a pi bond and making a new pi bond. But this new pi bond is not going to be as close as possible to the original pi bond. How can we make it closer? Well, if we put the new pi bond here, that would obviously be closer to the original pi bond. So putting the head all the way out here is uh, wrong. This is not a good way to draw an electron pushing arrow. So I'm going to erase this head because this is putting the new pi bond too far from the old pi bond. Instead, this is a good place with the new pi bond. Um, and at that point, you probably wouldn't also draw this arrow, but I'm not going to worry about that right now. Both of these arrows satisfy the as close as possible rule. That's the only thing that we're worried about right now.
Do these arrows satisfy the as close as possible principle? This arrow is fine, but here we're taking a lone pair and making a pi bond. Taking a lone pair and making a pi bond. But is this the closest possible pi bond that we could make to the original lone pair? No. How could we make a pi bond that's closer to the original lone pair? Well, if we put the pi bond here, it would clearly be closer to the original lone pair. So that's what we're supposed to do. We're supposed to put the new pi bond as close as is possible to the original lone pair. So this arrow here is making too big of a jump. I'm going to raise this head. That's wrong. Instead, you'd want to put the new pi bond here closer to the original lone pair. Does this arrow satisfy the as close as possible? Now we're taking a pi bond and making it into a lone pair. This is an example of taking a pi bond and making a lone pair. You can see we're making a lone pair because the head is pointing directly at this atom. Uh, but is this lone pair going to be as close as possible to the original pi bond? No. How can we put a lone pair closer to the original pi bond? Well, that arrow would have put um, a lone pair much closer to the original pi bond because it would actually be owned by an atom that was sharing that pi bond. So this is the right arrow. This is too far away to put that new lone pair. So I'm going to raise this head because it's putting the new lone pair too far away. This is a better arrow. Uh, again, it turns out this is not going to give us a very significant resonance structure, but all I want to focus on now is the fact that it is as close as possible. Or you could do this. The other way to put the lone pair as close as possible is to put the lone pair on the nitrogen. So if we want to move this pi bond into a lone pair, to put it as close as possible, we'd have to put it on this carbon or this nitrogen. Does this satisfy the as close as possible rule? Well, no. Now we're taking a pi bond and making it into another pi bond. We're taking a pi bond and making it into another pi bond. But this is not the closest that we could possibly put a new pi bond. It would be closer if we put the new pi bond right here. That would be closer to the original pi bond. By the way, there's other things wrong with this too. Uh, for example, this just isn't a candidate for resonance. Another thing that's wrong with this arrow is that this atom is not a candidate for resonance. But again, I really don't want to focus on all those other issues right now. I just want to focus on whether the arrows are satisfying the as close as possible rule. Well, by itself, that's a good reason to reject this arrow. This pi bond is not as close as possible. Instead, obviously, if we put a pi bond here, that would be closer to the original pi bond. So remember, the as close as possible rule means that you want to put the new pi bond as close as possible to the original pi bond. Or you want to put the new pi bond as close as possible to the original lone pair. Or you want to put the new lone pair as close as possible to the original pi bond. So this head is not as close as possible. This one is. By the way, when you're using the as close as possible rule, um, you're not comparing these transitions to each other. We're not comparing these transitions to each other. So um, when we move this pi bond, we have two choices. We can make the pi bond into a lone pair, or we can make the pi bond into another pi bond. Uh, and you can't, choose between these, you can't choose between different transitions on the basis of as close as possible. For example, so here's, here's two transitions we might possibly make. We might make this transition, or we might make this transition. Uh, but either of these are legal. You can't choose between these by saying that this is putting it closer um, because um, the as close as possible rule is um, only when you're comparing two arrows of the same type. The as close as possible rule is only for when you're comparing two, uh, two arrows of the same type. So, for example, this is moving a pi bond into a lone pair, and this arrow is moving a pi bond into a pi bond. This arrow is moving the pi bond into a lone pair, this type, and this arrow is moving the pi bond into another pi bond, this type. Well, you can't compare arrows of different types using the as close as possible rule. Uh, that's not what the as close as possible rule is for. So we can't tell which of these is better or good by asking which is closer. The as close as possible rule is only for when you're comparing two arrows of the same type of transition. So for example, again, Which of these two arrows would be better? Well, now these are both the same type of transition. 
They're both pi bond to lone pair. These are both pi bond to lone pair. But in one case, we're putting the lone pair on this carbon, and in the other case, we're putting the lone pair on this carbon. Well, clearly this arrow is better because it's putting the lone pair closer to where the original pi bond was. This arrow is bad because it's taking this pi bond and moving it a long way away into this lone pair. So the idea, again, is when is it correct to use the as close as possible rule? Um, the as close as possible rule is what you want to use when you're comparing um, two arrows of the same type. For example, two arrows which, which are both moving a pi bond into a lone pair. Um, you can't use the as close as possible rule to compare two arrows of different types. So if you have one arrow that's moving a pi bond into a lone pair, and another arrow that's moving a pi bond into a pi bond, you can't choose between those by saying, oh, gee, the lone pair is closer than the pi bond. That's not the, the way this principle is supposed to be used.